Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. Today, I want to discuss my favorite personal finance books that have been released in the last five to six years. Now, the reason why I'm choosing five to six years as a time frame is because of this. Finance moves so quickly nowadays from cryptocurrencies to NFTs, from the stock market. Things that were written in the 1990s might not even apply anymore, especially with the age of the internet. So I want to kind of put a barrier here and say, hey, look, five, six years, that's what we're looking at. And this is what my list is comprised of. Now, I will also tell you that if you happen to read some or all of these books, you may or may not come across my name in some of them. I'm just going to throw that out there. You I might be in some of these books, okay? That's not the only reason why I'm choosing some of these, um, but because I enjoy the content, I understand the author, and I think that just the, the way that they present a lot of these things are, are really fr fun and fresh and unique and obviously impactful because everything in finance has been out there, right? Like save more than you spend. That That is really what in finance is. And investing is make more money. <laughs> That's all investing is. But the way I say it and the way that some of these authors say it is a bit different. And it's the reason why we connect, right? It's the reason why you like and subscribe because I may describe it differently than somebody on CNBC, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first one, I don't have the physical book. It is in my home. I know I have it somewhere. But it is Get Good With Money by Tiffany Lee Che. I will just put a picture here. Uh, now, her and I have been friends for a while. I am I do appear in this book a few times, but the reason why it's on the list is not because of that or the fact that it's a New York Times bestseller or Wall Street Journal bestseller. <laughs> Aside from all of that, um, the reason why it's on the, uh, on the list is because it is comprehensive. It does talk about every single part of your financial life. It talks about investing, talks about estate planning, talks about making more, talks about budgeting, and does it in a way where you feel connected to the author and connected to how she is telling the story and just really coaching you through the entire situation. Uh, one thing that, that I like about her platform, I mean, y'all have probably heard of her platform as well. It, it feels like, oh, this, this is my friend, this is my buddy, this person I went to school with or what have you. And that makes you open up and just the level of expertise is there. Um, so that is one of my favorite books, read it front to back probably two or three times. Um, but again, like if I had to just pick one book to throw at people um, when they ask financial questions or they need financial help, this is definitely one of them. The other thing too is just the, the universality of it. Meaning it's like someone who just got, you know, just got a job out of college versus someone who is, you know, 10 or 15 years in their, their career. This is a good book to start out with and will really take you a very, very long way. Okay. Next one is Financial Adulting. Now, I do appear in this book as well. This is by Ashley Feinstein Gersley. The great thing about this book is, again, this is I like the, the comprehensiveness of a lot of these books in that it can take you from point A to point B in one single book as opposed to focusing on one particular topic. Now, this one is, again, more for you know financial adulting. This is I would say this is more so built for someone trying to figure out their their financial journey and like start off on the right foot and really get things organized there are a bunch of forms and kind of like worksheets if you will we are kind of writing like here are my goals here's what this thing costs and really help you to get there in an efficient way which is what i like so you got somebody i would say maybe between 20 let's say college age 20 to 25 to about 30 to 35 and it's just trying to figure out like what to do and how to do it and how to keep things organized that is a book that i would go for the next one and this one just came out this is cashing out by julian and christian saunders friends of mine they i do not appear in this book <laughs> but um they just did a book tour here um in raleigh not too long ago and this one is it's hard to change my mind it's very hard to change my mind uh, when it comes to finance because I've been doing it for so long. And when I say change my mind, I mean change my viewpoint on how I feel about certain things. So for me, someone who, who has been doing finance and economics and investing for a while, you are kind of trained to think in a certain way. You come in, you invest 15% of your income, and in 30 years you retire. That is still a thing. However, they were able to, to pay off tons of debt and retire early and live the life that they always want to live 
right now by cashing out and leaving the workforce and doing things completely differently like from from a personal mentorship i've learned a lot but also from the book i've learned a ton and it's really kind of shifted my focus on like do i have to work forever it, isn't there a way that i can you know change the system and and really make it work for me and get everything that I want to get out, out of it and more. So if you're looking, you're like, you feel like you're in the rat race and you want to take control of your finances and your freedom, then that is a book that you want to pick up immediately. All right. So the next one is technically three books here. And that is all these are written uh, by Aaron Lowry. The Broken is really a series. Broken Leo. Uh, stop scraping by and getting your financial life together. Then you have her take on investing, which is great. And then you have Broke Millennial um, Talks Money. Now, all of these are really, really good. Um, I love her writing style. I've been a fan of her writing style for a while. I do appear in this one. Um, here's what I like about them. So I, I enjoy the comedic tone, the lighthearted, like, oh, this, this is hilarious, right? If, so if you are looking to read a book and enjoy it and not just read a bunch of facts and figures, then these are the books for you. So the first one is really more comprehensive, kind of gives you everything you need to know from a high level. Then it gets really, really good into investing. There is an interview, um, I forget her name, but she did an interview with someone that is extremely good and she managed, I don't know if it was a billion dollar fund or something like that and she gives her take on investing uh, a lot of great interviews that you definitely want to check out and then the talks on money this is one that i think is extremely important and it's come up in in interviews that i have done and it's also come up in book talks i've done and also book talks i have attended for other people's books in terms of like how do i talk to my parents about money how do i talk to my kids how do i talk to my spouse uh, someone i'm dating like how do we have these tough conversations about money and what are we supposed to do what are we supposed to talk about how is it supposed to go and what are some ways i can get this conversation started this is the book to help you to do that um, and I also like the fact that, you know, there, there are some books, especially those written in like the early 2000s and definitely in the 90s, they're really like judgmental in, in their tone in terms of like, hey, you lost money in the stock market because you did something stupid, which is like, that's not always the case. I just, you just didn't know. Or you're broke and you're in debt because you're, you know, you're a bad person, which a lot of books in the early 90s, not going to name no names, but a lot of books in the 90s and uh, in, in early 2000s did do that. These are very non-judgmental, very fun, very lighthearted, and very effective in the messages that they are there to convey. All right, so we're winding down. We've got two more left. The one, this one is Millionaire Next Door, and this is the updated version with his daughter. So the original one was written by Thomas J. Stanley. Um, now, now that one was written years ago, um, but his daughter came through. She also has a PhD and revamped a lot of the data and messages in it. And it's a little bit, if I'm recalling the size of the original book, this is a little more digestible, so it's a little thinner. You can see a lot of things happen <laughs> with his book here. Um, so this is a very good one. It tells you, um, and this is the next millionaire next door. So the original one is the million next, millionaire next door. This is the, the next millionaire next door. Um, so updates a lot of data and what it did for me, um, and what I think the original did is just show you like how real people build wealth and what it actually looks like. One of the things that, that I wrote about in, in my books as well, but I got a lot of that inspiration and some of those data points from this book. And we obviously cite where we got those from. Um, but the case here is that, you know, like the, the average millionaire drives an F-150. They've been working, uh, you know, in plumbing. They started their own business and, and then that started to build. I think a lot of times in society and social media, like we focus and know of like, you know, LeBron James and Kanye West and Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk is like these super billionaires. And like, that is the only way to get there. Whereas like, that's, that's extreme, extreme wealth you cannot spend in your lifetime. However, the one, two, three, four million dollar person could be next door. And they really lay out all of the statistics and things that they tend to do. Staying in one house, obviously budgeting, investing 15% of their income or more, sometimes staying at one job for a while. Like a lot of those things are there and it really decodes a lot of that. So if you are someone that says, hey, this is the salary I'm making. I want to figure out how to get to the next level and what millionaires actually do. This is the book for you. And it really changed. I wouldn't say changed because I read the original and that was more than 10 years ago. Um, really confirmed a lot of the things that I am trying to do in my own life. Like there's a reason why I've never in my life had a car payment. Now I'm also 
admittedly relatively young. <laughs> so my knees say I'm old, but I'm I'm not even 35 yet. So, you know, I by taking a lot of those strategies in that book, I'm like, well, they're not taking out expensive cars. They're not buying, you know, from they actually have a list of what the top cars that they own. Like Ford is obviously up there. Lexus and Toyota are, are up there, which we own a Lexus, we own a Ford. It's a Lincoln, but it's made by Ford. Y'all get the point. Um, but aside from all that, I'm like, look, I don't see nobody with Ferraris up here on this list in terms of what millionaires are buying. So guess what I'm not buying? I'm not going to get a Ferrari. I will get the nicest Toyota I can get. <laughs> I will get the nicest used Lexus I can get and, and roll with that and, and stick with no car payments because I want to copy a lot of those strategies and use what I can to get to where I want to go even if I'm on a modest salary or something like that. The other cool thing, at least for me, for that book is as someone who has advised four millionaires and seen how they got there, a lot of this checks out. I mean, a lot of it. I've seen people who walk in with $13 million in their account looking normal. Like you would not know that they could buy the bank. <laughs> you would not know that they owned, you know, 50 chains of, of Domino's pizza or something like that. And they just look super, super regular. So it really just shows you what wealth actually looks like, which is something that I enjoy. And the fact that it's backed by data is always so much fun. All right. So the last one is my book from Burning the Blueprint to Rebuilding Black Wall Street After a Century of Silence. I'm trying to tilt it so you guys can see. This is the only one that has a glossy cover as I'm looking at the rest of the books. Um, there are two things that this book accomplished. Obviously, it's going to be on my list since I wrote it. Um, but two things that that the two things I want to add to it. Um, one, it is both the history book in a finance book put together. It talks about my story uh, from growing up in Tulsa, Oklahoma and learning about the, the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, which a lot of people did not know up until last year due to shows that were on HBO. Um, so it just talks about, like, hey, here's what it's like to be from here. Here's actually what happened because from someone who, who lived there, the stories that you were told growing up, the stories you were told in school, aren't actually what uh, what occurred and they don't tell the entire spectrum of what happened and as well as the context. So y'all talked about, y'all heard me talk about context in terms of investing, what's going on in the economy. Well, in terms of history, that matters as well. So I talk about that and then I talk about solutions. How do you build wealth? How do you, you know, understand what a mutual fund is and how that can boost you further and really meet solutions with what the problem is, especially in Tulsa. So it is an extremely good read. And if, if you read it, well, I want you to pay attention to as you're reading, you'll notice that I cite everything. So in fact, um, I think there are, there's a 40 page, might be 40 page. So for pages 165, I said 40 pages, not 40 pages. From 165 to 182, there are a ton of uh, sources. So what I like to do when you are, um, there you go. So what I like to do, um, whether it's a, a, a stat or something I got from a different book to say, hey, look, this is what's happening in the market. Or, uh, you know, for example, the cost of racism in America is $17 trillion. That is cited. So you can go to the exact website. I got it from, it's actually from Citigroup uh, and, and read even more. So this is a book that keeps on giving in terms of like the, the history, the research. Um, now I'm a little biased because I wrote the book. <laughs> so a lot of the stories are, are deeply personal and then really move you through history and through finance in a way that I think is important in a way that you will not see. I can guarantee you, you will not see in any other book out there. And I did that on purpose. I wanted to make sure that my book stood out and that it felt different, that it read different, but it gave you the same quality information. All right. So that is it. Those are all my books. First, Get Good With Money. I'll put that one here again. So I don't have my physical copy. I'm really annoyed that I don't have my physical copy. Uh, I know it's in one of these boxes. I still haven't packed. I still have not unpacked rather. I've got, we got 12 boxes in the entire house that are still not unpacked. We got to get some bookshelves, some more bookshelves and stuff. Um, but in either case, um, get good with money. That's one on the list I don't physically have. You got from burning the blueprint. You also have cashing out. Then you have financial adulting. The next millionaire next door, and you can get all of these almost in any bookstore, including mine. Uh, especially if you have like a local bookstore, tell them to, to order the book and they'll get it. Um, and then you have broke millennial series on getting your financial life together, investing 
and having these financial talks. Uh, so Talks Money is that one. All right, that is my list. Let me know what your favorite books are and try to do it in the last five to six years. I just, just want to challenge you because everybody can just throw out uh, Rich Man in Babylon and Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I'm actually not a fan of Rich Dad Poor Dad. We have a conversation about that on a different day. All right, so that's it for me. Have a great weekend. Have a great Labor Day. We will be we will be doing a members only uh, video either tonight or tomorrow, and it is time for football. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.